Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Carrie Schoenwald, Manager for International Educational Exchanges at Providence with the Global and Domestic Engagement Team. Since 2012, our department has partnered to make global health impact through service that honors the leadership, expertise, and goals of communities around the world. We currently partner with programs in Guatemala, Mexico, and Malawi by leveraging both the talents and material resources of the Providence system. We are committed to bi-directional work that begins to break down the systemic health and resource inequities that are the global legacy of colonialism. For this reason, among many others, we were excited to have the opportunity to join a partnership in 2017 that included Seed Global Health, the University of Malawi School of Medicine, and the Swedish Family Medicine Residency Program. With the primary goals of strengthening access to care and increasing the quality of health services, this partnership has been training and educating Malawian family medicine specialists since 2015. Within this program, there are immersive learning and teaching opportunities in Malawi for family medicine residents from the Providence system and in the US for Malawian registrars or residents. Learners teach and teachers learn from one another in ways that are personal, professional, and profound. Today, we will learn more about healthcare in Malawi, about the bi-directional impacts of this partnership, as well as a bit about what life looks like on the ground at the Mangochi District Hospital. My first introduction will be for a guest who is not a panelist today, because she is currently in Malawi doing this work tirelessly and with great passion. Um, and it makes participation um, in a live video event a bit difficult when you are in Malawi. So uh, the reality is though that Dr. Anna McDonald is the linchpin in all we do and therefore present in all we do and present with us today. You will see her to your left in this photograph. Um, this was several months ago during the pandemic, of course, um, with the nursing staff at Mangochi District Hospital. After completing her family medicine residency at Swedish First Hill, as well as a global health fellowship and a diploma in tropical medicine, Dr. Anna McDonald spent one year as a physician educator with Seed Global Health in Malawi, and since 2015 has been working with the University of Malawi College of Medicine to develop the first family medicine training program in Malawi. She joined the faculty of Swedish First Hill in 2017 and now facilitates the global health rotation for residents from our system splitting her time between Seattle and Malawi. Thank you, Anna, and you're here with us. Next, I will introduce Dr. Modai Menula. He's faculty at Mangochi District Hospital and will be joining us today in pre-recorded video to ensure that the technical issues do not get in the way of our opportunity to learn from him. He is the second graduate of the University of Malawi's Master of Family Medicine degree and is currently the deputy head of the Family Medicine Department in Mangochi. Additionally, Providence and Swedish were fortunate to host Dr. Manula in 2017 when he attended our six-week Family Medicine Immersion Program called the Global Family Medicine Collaboratory. So Dr. Manula will bring us into today's discussion by sharing what he sees as the value of primary care in Malawi. Please share the video. Top now we only have four central hospitals in the country. It is really difficult that uh, most of these patients can access care in these central hospitals. So probably family medicine bridges that gap whereby it uh, moves specialized care towards where patients are. Uh, number two, at the same time, it's also cost effective because we don't have as much resources as possible to keep on sending patients to central facilities and uh, it does being cost effective as well because there is a component of preventive medicine in a family medicine program so if you are to compare um, curative and preventive preventive is usually cheaper so that's what also makes family medicine important in our country.
I am that you can hear me. Am I on screen? Okay, I'm so sorry, my screen seems to be frozen, so I can't tell that I'm still on. I'm relieved to know that I am. Sorry for the, the technological glitches inherent in life today. Um, I know that at least on my screen, I missed uh, some of the volume of Dr. Nanula's um, video. However, in summary, he spoke of the great shortage of physicians and of primary care in Malawi and uh, the critical nature of providing um, a greater pipeline of family, of primary care physicians. Um, and in follow-up to this event, we will also have uh, blogs and you will be able to um, catch up with the transcript of what you missed in that video. So the next speaker I will introduce is Jacob Nettleton who is a family physician at the Health Point Community Health Centers in Seattle and has been a physician educator for the last four years with C Global Health in Malawi. And he supports family medicine development for current and future Malawian clinicians and is invaluable to this program as he partners with Dr. Anna McDonald to manage the global health residency rotation. Dr. Nettleton, will you please paint a health picture of Malawi for us, as well as tell us a bit about the background of the Malawi partnership and about your and Dr. McDonald's roles within it? Yeah, um, thanks for having me. It's wonderful to be here today. Um, it was good to hear from uh, Dr. Nanula, my colleague there. Um, so, you know, as it pertains to health, uh, Malawi is a country that continues to make uh, improvements but also struggle quite a bit with uh, a lot of the metrics by which we judge uh, health and healthcare systems, you know, whether it be life expectancy, maternal and child mortality, or excess morbidity and mortality from a, a range of conditions. Um, but that's, of course, in comparison with countries that have not had to deal with the legacies of uh, colonialism and economic imperialism. Um, but things are changing and, um, you know, with non-communicable diseases like diabetes and uh, hypertension uh, and the mor morbidity and mortality that goes along with those set to further test people's health and healthcare systems over the coming decades. Um, and despite having a fantastic college of medicine and other health workforce schools within Malawi, uh, the health care workforce continues to be stretched thin. Um, I won't repeat uh, some of what uh, Dr. Nanula was talking about, um, but just that, you know, uh, as he said, doctors are uh, mostly in the central hospitals and most Malawians are born and live their lives in the rural district setting. And so it was recognized that uh, that setting, uh, the rural district hospital setting, um, is fertile ground for um, elevating quality and equity within healthcare, hence family medicine. Um, so in terms of this partnership, you know, it started way back 2013, 2014 between uh, Dr. Martha McQuero of the Malawi College of Medicine, one of the first family physicians in, in Malawi, um, and Dr. Elizabeth Hutchinson, um, when, uh, who was a graduate of the Swedish residency program and who was a, a seed clinical educator in Malawi at that time. And they dreamed of a bi-directional partnership which at the beginning was a unidirectional um, with American registrars uh, coming to Malawi. But as Malawians, um, as it was established and Malawians uh, began to uh, pass through the postgraduate training program, um, it's taken on this valuable bi-directional uh, quality. And there's been an ever-growing formality of partnership between SEED and Providence and Swedish, um, as well as the College of Medicine. Um, in terms of uh, Dr. McDonald and me, um, we each worked two years full-time in uh, Mangochi at Mangochi District Hospital, and uh, now we work part-time or part of the time uh, there each year and then part of the time in Seattle teaching and training uh, family medicine uh, postgraduate trainees as well as uh, medical students in family medicine, serving as faculty with the College of Medicine. 
supervising and mentoring visiting residents, um, as well as helping coordinate and participate in the activities when the Malawian trainees come to the U.S. Um, in terms of education and, and scholarship. So I think I'll end there for now. I apologize again for my ongoing technological um, issues. Uh, it's, it's making it a little bit confusing on my end, but I'm back with you now. Thank you, Dr. Nettleton. Our next speaker is Mr. Chris Maddox. He is the Managing Director of Partnerships and External Affairs at Seed Global Health, where he oversees the development and communication functions, as well as supporting strategic partnerships, such as the one we are talking about today. Chris Maddox. Can you please tell us a bit about Seed Global Health, its program goals in Malawi, and how COVID has or has not shifted these goals? Great, thank you everyone. I'm so uh, excited and honored to be here sharing this panel with uh, all of you, you wonderful individuals. Um, so I start by introducing Seed Global Health. Um, for those that aren't familiar, uh, we were founded in 2011 um, and currently are have programs in five countries. So we're working in Uganda, Zambia, Sierra Leone, uh, the Kingdom of East Swatini, and then uh, the program that we're talking about today, which is in Malawi. Um, at over 20 sites uh, across these countries, you know, SEED has helped to train uh, more than 20,000 doctors, nurses, and midwives in, um, uh, in, in each of these contexts. And um, as uh, Dr. Nettleton noted and was prior, previously mentioned. Um, we do this and our, our work is focused on countries uh, that have critical shortages of health workers. Um, so the, as uh, some may be aware, you know, according to the World Health Organization, uh, there is a global shortage of uh, skilled health workers um, estimated to grow to 18 million uh, by the year 2030. Um, this represents a significant inequity in um, health resources, uh, you know, the human capital that is the backbone and fundamental to health delivery. Um, and as well as kind of uh, in, in Africa where 16% of uh, the global population lives, um, these shortages are most acute. Um, so in the program as that uh, we're discussing today, our, our partnership in Mangochi uh, is a unique one. You know, Seed Global Health is modeled, um, Dr. Nettleton mentioned it already, this, this concept and theory of bi bi-directional partnership and leadership. Um, and for Seed Global Health, this is a really meaningful part um, and kind of the spirit of our work and how it's designed. Um, unlike some global health programs or NGOs all seeking to do uh, important work, um, Seed Global Health does not have a one size fits all or kind of a a uh, prescriptive model for how we deliver and, and help build and support um, health workforce capacity. Uh, we do so by co-creating programs with the local leaders, the governments, the stakeholders in the countries where we work to ensure that uh, any efforts that we're doing with, um, with clinicians or, or caregivers um, are fully integrated into the needs and the priorities of the country, therefore ensuring that uh, we are building local leaders and champions who can uh, continue this work, um, you know, effectively um, picking up the um, the banner for what we have, uh, the progress that we're helping to support and introduce, um, and then can move that um, move that forward. Um, in Malawi, uh, in developing our program model um, and our partnerships, you know, there are three. Uh, core focuses in the country. Um, Dr. Nettleton mentioned some of the health indicators that we're focusing on, um, but in overall, it, our, our goals are to strengthen mental health services um, in a country where um, nearly 40% of patients uh, present with a mental health uh, disorder of some sort. Uh, maternal and child health, um, given um, the country's uh, very challenging uh, maternal and child health metrics, you know, improving care for women and children is absolutely both a national priority and then obviously a, a local um, priority for our stakeholders. And then finally, um, and as it pertains to this partnership in particular, um, the area of primary care and community health. Uh, as Dr. Nettleton and um, 
has has noted already, you know, Malawi is a primarily rural uh, country. Over 80% of the population um, exists or lives um, outside of urban centers, uh, meaning that it's critically important to build a health workforce that is agile, flexible, and is able to be distributed at the district level facilities or or lower village health facilities. Um, so to enable that kind of um, that kind of support for the health system in Malawi, um, in a country with the, that is the ninth poorest in the world and that does not have significant resources, um, we see global health enters uh, this kind of context again through a spirit of co-creation, bi-directional learning, and partnership, and then a three-pronged approach uh, to our program. The first is, as you've heard a little bit about, um, developing a suite of health professional education tools to improve the breadth and depth of uh, educational inputs uh, that exist in the in the country. Uh, second, and where I will spend a lot of time talking today, um, within clinical mentorship, you know, being at the bedside with residents and trainees, um, so that not only are they um, moving through a training program with kind of the, the knowledge and understanding, but they've also had the benefit of mentorship and kind of that um, peer uh, showing and, and learning um, at the bedside. And then the final piece that makes, um, that's really important to see global health, and frankly, it kind of undergirds um, all of the work is, again, ensuring that this uh, this health systems capacity building, this investment in human potential and human capital uh, is married to a strong policy foundation. It, you know, essentially, we can't help to sustain the improvements that we put in today if we don't see government and public policy moving with these investments um, and helping ensure that, um, uh, pardon the pun, but it's, um, you know, that the seeds that we're planting um, have a chance to fall into fertile ground and take root. Um, and if we're going to do that, we need to make sure that ministries of health, ministries of finance, um, multilateral and investment partners um, are also working with the countries and the country leadership to, um, to ensure that these investments uh, can take hold. Um, so those are some of the pieces that kind of um, is our foundational to see global health. You know, the thing that has changed, I would say, most in the context of COVID, um, it feels strange to be a year into this experience in many ways, but um, I would say some things haven't changed. And I think that's really important to note is that um, for countries that do have these shortages of health workforce, um, the the need for tr trained and skilled health uh, professionals doesn't train because we have our pandemic um, hats on. Um, you know, babies are still being born, bones are still being broken, um, critical care is still needed. Um, and for countries that have these critical shortages of health workers, um, these countries can't pivot on a dime and just go into COVID mode. You know, they really have to um, have that backbone of health professionals that can deliver the essential uh, primary care. And so for SEED, as COVID has taken hold, uh, assuredly, our uh, you know, uh, travel has been disrupted, uh, health clearances, vaccine passports, again, all of the things that have become our, our, new, our new normal um, have certainly disrupted you know, the operation of a global health NGO. But I would say what hasn't changed is in some ways more important, which is um, leaning into this moment, understanding that um, we can't pause primary care uh, because of a pandemic and um, thanks to uh, wonderful uh, professionals like uh, Dr. McDonald, Dr. Nettleton, um, the team at Providence, you know, we've been able to, at this moment of frankly dire need, um, and we'll hear more about some of these challenges uh, maybe in a moment, um, you know, we have been able to lean into this this moment and continue to build that pipeline, um, support our partners in the ground in Mangochi. Um, and hopefully, again, this is where it, it really matters, making sure that as we start to think about recovery or moving out of the pandemic, um, that we haven't lost ground in, in establishing these important foundations um, that will be so critical both to meeting future, you know, meeting those future um, health emergencies, but also, again, dealing with the day-to-day the -day, um, health exigencies that, um, that have to be dealt with and that um, are every person's rights. So thank you. I'm really thrilled to be a part of this and uh, continuing this conversation. Thank you, Chris. Uh, uh, SEED is a phenomenal organization and we feel very lucky to have joined the partnership um, with such strong foundational infrastructure and values alignment. Um, our next speaker is Anne-Marie Williams, a family physician who spent four weeks in Malawi as a second year resident in the Swedish First Hill Family Medicine Residency 
and now splits her time between New Mexico and Liberia as a Global Health Fellow for UCSF. Dr. Williams, can you share a bit about what has most stayed with you from your four weeks in Mangochi, both personally and professionally, and also what you believe your impact was in your time there? Yeah, thank you. And it's it's good to join uh, uh, old colleagues, <laughs> having left the residency now. Um, I think what struck me the most was just the power of teaching as a tool to um, strengthen systems and enforce and improve healthcare quality. Uh, I think that there are sort of core principles of teaching that translate across very different clinical contexts and that that makes it a good piece for residents to to come in and join in that piece of the work so for a little background when residents go the main piece that they're helping with is um, teaching and supervising medical students on their family medicine rotation and i think especially in that aspect of building skills in history taking physical exam um, building a differential diagnosis a lot of that is um, you know, foundational and does translate. And so is a really thoughtful piece, I think, for residents to, to help with. And you actually get to really demonstrate high quality care through in encouraging curiosity and really thoughtful, um, empathic um, thinking about, about patients that, in that aspect of care. Um, I similarly learned a lot from watching doctors Nettleton and McDonald um, lead lead and guide change through through examples. So things like pushing or suggesting um, ways to make really strong follow up plans for patients when they leave the hospital, or modeling, you know, following up on labs, circling back to make sure that the medical plan is happening. You know, just modeling those aspects of high quality care. I think I could see how impactful that change could be without it coming as a sort of top-down um, outsiders coming in and telling people what to do approach. And so I think those are really important things to see modeled for, for my own work going forward. Um, and then I think what has also stayed with me is just great humility and respect for people practicing in such low resource settings. I will remember um, trying to diagnose or think through a possible heart attack um, in a place where you can't do an EKG, like how it's a complete frame shift of how you would um, think about that diagnosis and organize care around that. And also um, another example of trying to teach how to um, provide care for someone in like diabetic crisis or diabetic ketoacidosis, which in our setting relies heavily on frequent labs. Um, and to do that in a, in a place without those labs, um, which I think there's a lot of risk in that, in fact, um, but that is the reality that people are facing. And so just um, so much humility and respect for, for um, our colleagues that, that practice there day to day. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Williams. I had the great pleasure of being in Malawi when Dr. Williams was on rotation and um, the photograph that you all saw of her and, um, and her colleague presenting um, a didactic was, uh, it was very humbling for me to see how well embraced um, residents are on the ground in Mangochi and um, how quickly they um, try to adjust to all of the changes and, and move in partnership with those that they meet. Thank you, Dr. Williams. So, Dr. Nettleton, how have the U.S. residency rotations to Mangochi and the Malawian registrar rotation in the U.S. supported the goals established by this partnership? Yeah, um, well, I think uh, in terms of thinking about the American residents uh, visiting Malawi. I think Dr. Williams uh, hit the nail on the head with that one um, because we do really very strongly that, uh, you know, uh, clinicians from one setting have no business, you know, dropping into another setting that's not their context and uh, uh, telling people what to do or kind of flexing their own, you know, non-context specific knowledge. 
Um, but there are things that translate universally in terms of supporting clinical problem solving skills um, and stuff like that. Um, and I appreciate Dr. Williams bringing up the modeling family medicine because that's one thing. Um, there are only a few family physicians in Malawi and the goal, uh, you know, uh, the vision with the College of Medicine and the Ministry of Health is to vastly grow that number as a solution for rural district medicine and for medical students to see, um, you know, trainees and more more family physicians um, teaching and uh, being proud of the discipline that they're in and explaining their own kind of uh, career and, and clinical care uh, and educational experiences. I think that's very valuable for uh, the medical students. Um, and then it also, you know, serves as an introduction to clinical system strengthening and clinical education for the visiting American uh, residents such that it, you know, serves almost like a pipeline, you know, um, in Dr. Williams' case. And certainly for me, because I was uh, uh, in the uh, residency rota rotation when I was a resident before becoming a uh, full-time seed clinical educator uh, myself. So, um and then, um, as Carrie alluded to, um, you know, this is a bi-directional partnership. And in 2017 and 2019, uh, the Malawian postgraduate trainees spent six weeks in a, um, a Providence and Swedish-sponsored family medicine immersion experience in Seattle. And, I, you know, uh, by all accounts, this was quite enriching um, in the areas of clinical education, especially in areas that were identified by the Malawian trainees as areas that... Uh, we have educational opportunities, um, you know, uh, not necessarily available to them. For example, um, in the area of geriatrics during the, during this last time, um, and then also education in comparable health systems, um, just by virtue of you know being immersed and and observing and participating in the health system uh, here in Seattle. Um, and then having the, supporting them and taking their next step towards uh, leadership in uh, primary health care and global health. They take a, a leadership course in, uh, at the University of Washington in global health leadership. And then finally in, in scholarship, um, as you see in the picture that's uh, being presented, um, this last week, both groups uh, in 2017 and 2019 participated in uh, the American Academy of Family Physicians Global Health Summit in, uh, and collaborated in presenting uh, sessions and workshops. Um, and then this last time, both the uh, AAFP Global Health Summit, as well as the Wonka uh, World Rural Family Medicine Conference, um, which was a, a great experience. And so this does, I do think these uh, experiences serve to meet the objectives of the different partners, including the pipeline of family medicine trainees with an aim towards systems improvement, pipeline of physician educators, um, cross-cultural and cross-systems um, collaboration, as well as strengthening Mangochi District Hospital specifically as a, like a hub of uh, clinical excellence and clinical education um, in the rural, rural district setting. Thank you, Dr. Nettleton. And um, with those with a keen eye, you will have noted um, Dr. Modai Minula in the first picture in 2017 and Dr. Anne-Marie Williams in the second. These are phenomenal um, uh, events that allow for a tremendous amount of um, bilateral, bidirectional collegial sharing. And in the case of the collaboratory, it was actually trilateral in the first one because we also had Guatemalan physicians, um, as well as Malawian physicians visiting, working very closely with um, the American residents. So it's a very powerful program. So now we will take a moment to hear from Dr. Manula again about what he sees as the benefit of this bidirectional exchange. You can play the second video. In different you. systems. These residents learn in different systems and different environments with different disease patterns so they tend to learn from each other during the interaction they tend to learn from each other at the same time they tend to strengthen each other's weaknesses because they have a difference in terms of educational background there are certain things
I think we're encountering some more technological difficulties. Give us a moment as we try to work through them. Ah, okay. I've been informed that it's not actually working. Um, so it will also be posted. Uh, we so very much wanted to have um, Dr. Manula's presence on this forum um, and we will we will provide his presence post forum. Uh, so our apologies for that. So um, moving on, um, in short though, Dr. Manula um, explained how the different contexts that the residents come from, whichever direction it's in, whether it's US residents being present in Malawi, working with Malawian registrars there and medical students and um, staff and faculty or vice versa of Malawian registrars coming here and being immersed with staff and faculty and medical learners that either way, the end result is that each, each learner, each teacher winds up being both because they are bringing their different contexts and they are deeply complementary. Um, there are very different uh, strengths and challenges encountered in each of our systems. And that winds up being the great strength of this partnership and partnerships like it is the, um, that is the grist for the mill of the bi-directional learning. So hopefully you will get to hear Dr. Manula say that in his own much more eloquent way. Chris Maddox, working within Global Health, can you tell us a bit about how this partnership and work in Mangochi is distinct from some of the broader seed context in Malawi? Yeah, thank you, Carrie. Um, you know, I think the way that this partnership, we've heard a, the word keeps coming up is, is bi-directional. Um, and I think one of the things that's uh, truly unique about this opportunity in Mangochi is, um, again, not only are we um, building a cohort and a pipeline of family medicine uh, practitioners, um, obviously those residents that um, are coming through are then practicing in the U.S., um, but also then building that pipeline in um, in the Malawian context. So for um, one of the things that I think I mentioned it uh, when I discussed this earlier, you know, that policy connection, you know, what we're seeking to build um, together uh, with our colleagues in Mangochi is, uh, you know, the backbone of a, of a health system that can uh, be replicated across the 28 districts. Um, so what I, what I see is kind of the unique um, um, and kind of expansive opportunity that um, has been started here in Mangochi is to show a model of deep partnership bi-directional learning um, that can then be modeled and replicated um, across the 28 districts. So Mangochi is um, one of a number of, of places in Malawi that um, seed works and it's the kind of uh, an exemplar and site um, that we believe is, is highly replicable and that we look forward to um, as this partnership with between Providence, uh, the College of Medicine and um, and see global health continues, um, seeing that uh, take shape and then expand to other sites uh, so that our, our impact is not just uh, in this one very important district, um, but it's something that we are able to then scale up as kind of part of the backbone of, of the health system uh, writ large. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Likewise, Dr. Williams. As you reflect on your own clinical work here in the US and the work in Mangochi and now Liberia, can you help us understand how these experiences intersect? Um, sure, I think that um, providing healthcare anywhere for a population that is different from you or that you're not from is a lifelong learning experience and each each uh, time you enter into a new place, you are kind of continuing to build on on those skills. A lot of it is actually unlearning certain sets of skills that make us uh, successful in school or in training um, or in academic medicine of um, kind of being a go-getter and getting stuff done and coming in really strong with a lot of energy and ideas. Um, and that is often not the best thing to do in most of these settings, and I think that's true in um, different communities in the U.S. as well. Um, but it's really hard to unlearn those skills and then build different, more collaborative ones. So I think that these experiences just continue to to build on each other um, and strengthen 
um, people working in health equity who can come in with um, kind of partnership and solidarity centered. Um, and I think also these different settings have all really reinforced a passion for um, health care quality, quality improvement in, in me. And I think that is kind of the next forefront of global health work. Um, the, there's a lot of structures and infrastructure and um, resources that have been put into building systems up. Um, but those systems are really only as strong as the quality of care they're providing. Um, and that is kind of, I think, the next step of making sure that um, the training is really emphasizing um, high quality care. And I've kind of seen that in each each place I've I've gone. Thank you for that perspective, Dr. Williams. Such vastly different settings, but of course, it's still medical care and it's still doctors taking care of, of patients. Thank you for sharing that. Dr. Jacob Nettleton, um, I am going to direct this question to you. Uh, if we have time, I'll get the perspective of our other speakers. What are the ways that this partnership does and does not yet move toward global health equity in Malawi? Thanks, yeah. So I think there are some ways it does and some ways that we could continue to improve on. In ways that it does, you know, we, we've been harping on this uh, bi-directional aspect of it, um, which I think is, is really vital. Um, you know, when uh, faculty members from the U.S. are working in Malawi, they are full-time faculty um, rather than just dropping in for, for short periods for the most part. Um, and, uh, you know, the emphasis on elevating the College of Medicine and the Ministry of Health's objectives, as Chris alluded to, um, and then actually using resources to, um, you know, fight against how resources usually flow in the world to support exposure and global health leadership and scholarship um, for our partners in the Malawian setting. Um, and then about uh, at least, you know, attempting as much as we can to be explicit about avoiding the pitfalls and other global health uh, programming and interventions. Um, and in our resident exchange, that includes pre-travel orientations and debriefs supervision to avoid the, the drain on um, host and local resources and uh, having some of the different co uh, difficult conversations to, to kind of uh, get through the weeds and some of these issues. Um, in ways that, you know, this is all a work in progress is that, you know, it's not exactly balanced. Far more uh, American residents come to visit Malawi than vice versa. And that's partially because the Malawian training program is in its uh, early stages, and so there haven't been that many Malawian uh, family medicine postgraduate trainees yet. But again, as Chris alluded to, um, the vision of the Ministry of Health is to have family physicians in you know all of the 28 districts, and so that's a lot of trainees and a lot of opportunity for further collaboration. And then our hope is, of course, that over time and over generations, um, the human resource for health development. Um, we'll start to put a dent in the kind of superstructural forces that reinforce uh, power and resource differentials. Um, but those forces obviously are strong. And so in, in those regards, it's, a, it's an uphill battle. Thanks so much, Jacob. So um, we don't have time for the, our other panelists to answer the same question, although I know they spend a great deal of time thinking about the answer to these questions and to this question in particular. We are going to try one final video from Dr. Manula as he shares his vision for primary care in, in Malawi um, of the future. To ensure that people living in the communities, they have a link to a specialized doctor, in this case, family physician, because there are a lot of things that are happening at the community level. And what we see at the hospital is just the tip of an iceberg. So I would think if we bring family physicians as part of my vision closer and closer to where people are, I would hope that some of the health indicators that we are facing now, I would believe they are going to reduce or decline. And at the same time, I also want to be part of a pro. Okay. 
that is um, a vision that we are all working toward. I would like to close out today's um, conversation by just saying that I, I recently learned of a movement within the field of global health to change the term capacity building to capacity sharing. And language, as we know, is powerful and a shift in language represents a shift in perspective and ultimately a shift in practices, policies, and funding. I hope that in spite of some of our technical challenges, I hope that you will all have learned today the ways that this partnership keeps evolving to share capacity with one another, all with the primary goal of strengthening and growing Malawi's primary care provider pipeline. So thank you to all of my colleagues who carved out time today to share your work with our audience. Additional thanks to the College of Medicine and C Global Health for making this partnership possible and including Swedish and Providence in your journey toward primary healthcare access to all Malawians. Above all, I would like to thank all of the Malawian clinicians and learners who embrace the opportunity for robust educational exchange, following, allowing for this bi-directional journey. And finally, thanks to all of our guests for joining today and for staying with us and to everyone for listening and sending in your questions. Um, we will try to answer those in blog form, post forum. To learn more about our initiatives, programs, services, and ways to give, or if you're looking for medical care, please visit providence.org and make sure to follow us on social media at Providence Health System for LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and under Providence on Twitter. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.